Detective Ace, Part Two. Today is just another day. Detective Ace was roaming about in the town. He was getting his coins ready to pre-order the new launch telescope. Forty and fifty. I have saved up enough for this new telescope. As he's about to go inside the shop, a car drives by. Hey, kiddo, hop in quickly before you get into any trouble. But today is the day for the pre-order. Ah,、uh, your telescope can wait. There's more trouble incoming. Aye, aye, sir. I guess. So detective and the policeman drove off to the crime site, which this time is a museum. So what is the situation this time? There's a burglary that has been reported in the museum. The eye of Vishnu has been stolen. The thief, who the citizens are referring to as the Invisible Man, had left a letter. Tomorrow, second of July, two p.m., you will see the real me steal the statue of King Arthur. It's thirteen fifty-five now. Is the venue packed with security? We have secured everything. There are over twenty-five policemen around the museum. There's no way the burglar can enter. The Invisible Man seems to be very confident, though. Oh, we should be seeing his grand entry in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Aloha, everybody. Seems like you have all gathered around to meet me. The people surrounded are confused. They look around, and they suddenly hear. The statue of King Arthur. It's gone. <gasps> There we are. I am always a step ahead with my planning. I know each and every move of all of you. Now escort me as I take this statue with me. We are gonna find out who you are. Of course, I will do a great reveal right away. Just then, there's a blast, and there's smoke on the top of the museum. It spreads down to the crowd. <laughs> As the smoke clears, the burglar reveals himself to be none other than here I am, the greatest detective of the town, Detective Ace. Catch me if you can. The burglar throws the smoke grenade again and vanishes into thin air. The crowd and the policemen are trying to search around the misty crime scene. Oh, look, he's in the car. Oh no, they're coming our way. The chief officer points at Ace in the car. Before anyone could crowd up, Mark drove away at an instant. Stop, thief! As Officer Mark and Detective Ace left the scene, they now had to keep safe as Detective Ace was in major danger. The next day, Detective Ace and Officer Mark made it to the front page of the news.、Uh, the situation is getting out of hand. We gotta let everyone know that we're innocent. Detective Ace shows his true colors. He has been behind every crime of the city. That's a very Iconic statement. Ha! Oh, come on, Ace. We need your focus. Mark, look at this. Detective Ace spots a clue in the newspaper photograph. This Detective Ace burglar has stitch marks on his hairline. See? This is definitely a mask. Drive me to the mask shop down the road. They're the best in town, and I think I have my doubts on them. All right then. Let's go. Mark and Ace drive to the mask shop. I guess I may have to ask you to go in. I want you to tell me the number of people who work there. That goes without saying. Stay here safe. Mark enters the mask shop and looks around. Help! As there's nobody, so he rings the bell at the counter. Wow, this place is really something. Yes. How can I help you? Oh, good afternoon. I would like to know if I could get a cat mask, something that looks realistic, customizable. Just specify your need in this entry book here. 
I will call you day after tomorrow. Don't request me to make it faster, else I will cancel your order. Oh, okay. I was wondering if you make human masks too, like doppelganger masks? My nephew and I specialize in them, but since it can be misused, we don't take human mask requests anymore. Just then, nephew Robert walks in. What are you doing here? We don't have anything to say. Please leave. Robert, that's not how you speak to customers. Please behave yourself at least for once. Then ask this officer to leave right away. He's here to blame us for no reason. My apologies, sir. I'll call you once we get done with your request. Um, okay. Robert frowns at Mark as Mark leaves the shop. As Mark got back to the car, he could hear the announcement on the radio. Rumor has it that Detective Ace is the mastermind behind all the crime that has happened so far in this town. Could you believe a kid like him could be Mafia? Chief Officer Ben says he is actively looking into this matter and will catch Ace as soon as possible. I hope you don't feel bad about this. <laughs> These are funny. Now I understand when they say media outlets twist their words. This one is good. I like Mafia Ace. It's got a good ring to it. I keep forgetting that you're still 14 and reckless. <laughs> anyway, what did you find out? Seems like the mask shop owner doesn't know about these whereabouts. But I got their entry book. Also, the owner has a nephew who seems to be rude and fishy. So a total of two work there. Family business, bravo. Let's see if we can find a matching handwriting. Both Mark and Ace go through the entry and see if they can find a match. Hmm. Aha! Vernon Solace? The phone number he entered is invalid too. So, what do you have to say, kid? I think I can connect the dots. Let's go to the shop again tonight. But this time, I will come along. That very night, Detective Ace sneaks into the shop. Hmm, so let's see if we can find any clue for the mask here. Uh, yes, but boy, I am so tired. Just as Officer Mark rested himself on the table, he accidentally pushes the bell, making it fall. But then, that suddenly opens to an area that leads to a secret room. Incredible! Tired Mark makes amazing deduction. <laughs> I feel like I report to you now. Ace and Mark slowly go towards the opening. As they move ahead, they spot a silhouette. I see somebody here. Oh, that's nephew Robert. Ace sees Robert take a mask, which turns out to be that of Detective Aces. Bingo. Bingo. Now I know exactly what's going on. Mark hops in and catches Robert red-handed with the costume. Freeze. Time to surrender and return everything you stole. He doesn't have the items here. Just arrest him and take him to the car. Where do you think they are? I will tell you when the time comes. Mark handcuffs Robert and takes him to the car. And let's make a fancy entry. Report to the news that Detective Ace has been caught by Officer Mark and ask everyone to gather in the museum at 12.30. At it, kid. The next day, Detective Ace and Officer Mark decide to go to the museum itself to expose Robert. The crowd has gathered as the letter was announced on the radio and the internet. The security and the chief were all present too. The crowd gasped as they saw Officer Mark bring Detective Ace along. Finally, Detective Ace has been caught. We are here to make an announcement. We not only caught Detective Ace, but... The crowd is waiting for this in curiosity. There is a lot of mumbling. Mark asked Detective Ace to come up. We have two Detective Aces? This is ridiculous. What on earth is happening? Detective Ace is actually the mask shop owner's nephew, Robert. And it doesn't end here. The real man behind it is... Chief whatever your name is... Ben. Okay. Huh? What are you even talking about? Hey kid, I'm gonna get fired if this turns out wrong. First, the robberies were announced, and when you revealed that it was me, I knew it was a trap. Second, 
The moment I saw the stitches on the hairline in the newspaper picture, I knew I had to visit the mask shop. So when Mark did first, he got me the entry book and I immediately recognized Chief Ben's handwriting with the entry here. Too bad you didn't try changing your handwriting, Vernon Solace. Further, if the robbery happened despite of the tight security in the museum, it had to be someone from the department who was helping the burglary. Robert did not want to steal. He helped Chief Ben make a mask that looks like me upon Chief Ben's request to turn the town against me. Watch your words, kid. Robert went in like a casual visitor in the museum, escorted by Chief Ben. He would go to the janitor's room and change to his Detective Ace's attire and come to the surface stealing precious artifacts. And the second robbery that happened, you decided to escort Robert into the museum when nobody was allowed to enter. Are you out of your mind? Mark, you are fired. Then why were you casually coming out of the museum when the burglar was right on the roof of the museum? You didn't seem surprised yesterday. The handwriting, the event, and yesterday's behavior, everything connected to one point, which was Chief Ben. Want to see how close the handwriting is of the letter, the entry, and your report she wrote last month, which I fetched from the station? Detective Ace displays all the items he has. All of them have the same handwriting of Chief Ben. The security arrested him right away. And about the stolen artifacts, they didn't go anywhere. They're in the janitor room of the museum. Robert cannot parkour. He threw a smoke bomb, went back into the janitor room to change, and came out from the entrance as a regular civilian. The policemen go inside the museum and check. They found the missing artifacts, and meanwhile, Chief Ben was being handcuffed. You were always threatening my position I worked hard for, so I wanted to teach you a lesson. Wait until I outsmart you, kid. The police officers drag him into the van and take him away. And yet again, Detective Ace solved a case at ease. So what's the reward you want this time, kid? Mafia Ace wants that telescope that I wanted to pre-order. Nah. Tell me something else. The new mayor of the town has already arranged it for you two weeks prior to its release. Oh, yes. I am going to be off duty today. Stargazing. <laughs> Oh, my God.